in this example, there's a couple things we want to look at. All right, and and the first thing we are looking at is like if we're going to talk about you know the domain and range. All right. So if I'm going to look at the domain, the domain from the from the graph is basically asking us what is the set of all x values where the graph is defined, right? And when we look at this graph, we see this graph is continuing going to the left, and it's going to continue going to the right. There's no reason for us to believe that the graph is going to stop, correct? Right? So we could write it as all real numbers. Okay. Some students liked this inequality information. That's fine, too. But the, um, the, de the way that we're going to use this is what we call interval notations. We're basically going to look at identifying the farthest left point and the farthest right point. And it comes into a little bit of an issue because there is no far left point, right? It's going to continue down to how far left is this going to go? Negative 1,000, negative a million. We could also say just we could represent this as negative infinity because there really is no way, no place it's going to stop, right? So the reason why I bring this up, that's fine, mathematically correct. That's fine, mathematically correct. Guess what's going to show up on a multiple choice way test? This is what I'll be expect. So on a free response, if you represent it all three of those ways, I'm not going to mark you wrong. That's perfectly fine. If you prefer one method or the other, that's cool. However, when looking at multiple choice, I want you guys to get familiar with this because that is what you will see. Yes? Correct. And so since infinity is actually not a number, like you can't grab and say you have infinity of something, right? So since infinity is not actually a tangible like number that you can actually obtain, that's why it's going to be using parentheses. Okay, but yes, we will get into that parentheses um, kind of component. So the range is basically asking us, you know, how low is this graph going to go and how high is it going? So in the range is talking about the y values instead of the x values as we did for domain. Well, this one's fairly simple. We're going down to negative infinity and then up to infinity. So again, this is going to be the same thing. All right. The next one is going to be increasing, decreasing, and constant. So when we're looking at increasing, decrease, constant, this is what kind of got to those other. This is what kind of got to those other students. All right. Um, we're looking at this. You can see that the graph is like when we're, we're reading an increasing, decreasing, constant. We're reading the graph from left to right. So we're, you know, just like a book, we're going to read this graph from left to right. And basically we're saying, you know, is the graph going up, is it going down, or is it remaining the same? And I think everybody would agree with me, from here to here, the graph is going up. Correct? Right? But again, we've got to be consistent with how we're going to reframe that. If we want to make sure that we you know, communicate to everybody what exactly is happening, and, or exactly we could say, we could say how much it's going up, or we could say when it's going up. Would you guys agree? You could say it's going up from like 0 to 10, or you could say it's going up from this point to this point. Yes? It's kind of like time versus quantity, right? So the way that we describe increasing, decreasing on intervals is when. We're not discussing how high or how low it's going up or down. We're just discussing when it's going up or down. So we can say here when it's, well, as far left as we can go, as long as we're moving to the right, this graph is going up, right? So it's increasing interval from negative infinity to 0. Now, technically, you could use a bracket here. All right? I avoid using brackets when I'm talking about increasing, decreasing intervals. Because technically, at the point 0, it's kind of stopped. It's not really actually increasing like at that value. Um, so therefore, when I'm talking about domain and range, we talk about included, excluded values. But for increasing, decreasing, I'm just going to use parentheses at all time. Then, as I go from 4, it jumps to here. And you can see the graph is, again, increasing from 0. And then it's going to continue increasing to infinity. Now, this is perfectly fine. But some students get confused with this and this. Like, should you use a, like a comma that connects them? Another way that we will write this, and you'll see more often, is what we do with the union symbol. And if you guys remember in maybe Algebra 1 or pre-algebra, a union is just a combining of those two intervals. So it's just a way to combine those two intervals. Now, is the graph in decreasing or constant at all? Decreasing or constant? No, nope, we don't need to worry about it. 
So let's talk about extrema. All right, extrema is basically saying where are the maxes and the mins? Where are the maxes and the mins? And actually, it's not even that. It's where are the max? Like, so if it's a max, that means every point to the left and every point to the right is below that value. Correct? And if it's a min, that means every point to the left of that point and every point to the right of that point is above. So if we're looking at this, if we want to identify max and mins, well, we notice these arrows kind of mess up. There is no absolute maximum or minimum, right? This graph is going to continue bound, uh, without bounds. However, if we were like to zoom in right there, we could say, well, this point right here, anything to the left is above it, and anything to the right is above it. Correct? Right? So this is what we call a relative max. It's not the absolute. When we're talking about absolute, that's talking about the absolute highest point on the graph or lowest point on the graph. When we talk about relative, that just means within a given like snapshot. So this extrema is our relative. Um, that's a relative max. And now there's a couple ways we can do this again. We could explain, we could dis define this relative max where it occurs, which would be the x coordinate, or how high is it, which would be the y coordinate. Wouldn't you guys agree? Couldn't we say like there's a relative max at x equals 0, and that would explain to you where that relative max occurs? Yes. Or couldn't you say there is a maximum value, a relative maximum value of y equals 3? You guys see that? So I want you guys to be understand that. There's a difference of the where or the of. And on tests and quizzes, you'll be asked one or the other, like where does it you know, explain? Now, a lot of times we could just write this a maximum value of. If we wrote 0, 3, does that take care of the where and the what? This is saying where it is at x equals 0, and then what the maximum value is of 3. right? So, but just be aware of the question. Sometimes the question will define other things. But I'll leave this as a coordinate point. Um, boundness. So I kind of actually gave this one away. So the boundness is basically telling you, is the graph restricted? Okay, And you guys can see, is this graph restricted? No. It goes without bound up, and it goes without bound down. So this is what we call unbounded. Okay. So if there was like, for instance, let's just have, you know, for an example, if the graph just looked like this. Is this graph restricted going up? Yes, right? It has an absolute maximum up there. So this is what we call bounded above. So if there is a restriction, if it only goes so high, then we say it's bounded above. It doesn't go any higher than a given point. All right? And we'll talk more about this as we get to as you guys actually get to them. Um, let's go and get with M behavior. Now, M behavior is a tricky one. Not really a tricky one as far as understanding, because I think many people can like understand M behavior, but M behavior gets tricky with the notation. So I'm going to keep it simple for today, but once we get into next chapter, I will introduce more mathematical definitions. So for right now, I'll let you guys off easy, and we'll just do a very basic notation for M behavior, but then we'll, we'll get into more mathematical ways as well as even more calculus ways to describe M behavior. So for right now, though, all the M behavior is asking us is where is the graph going as we go to the right or to the left? So again, we put back on our reading glasses and we say, let's look at the graph. As this graph, as I'm moving to the right, as my x values, as my domain is going to the right, where are my y values going? Or y or f of x, whatever, you know, we're talking about equation or a function. But as I'm going to the right, where is the y values going? Up, right? Yes? So you could say it's going up, or it's a, you know, they, the one group said it was positive. You could also say it's just, it's increasing or it's rising, right? So one way that I, just a preferred method that I like is it's going to rise to the right. All right, and as it goes to the left, as we're moving to the left, the graph is going down, which another way that we say this is it's falling. So we could say it's falling left. All right. And then last but not least, guys, I forgot to mention this. I don't know why I did this. Let's do, let's 
add some values there. And then the last thing, guys, is the x and y intercepts. So obviously, guys, the x-intercept is where the graph crosses. Okay, um, And again, you could represent the x-intercept as a value, like x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Or, depending on the question, you could also write it as a coordinate point. For instance, giving me the x value as well as giving me the y value. And it's important, one thing that's really important to understand, the x value, what is the y coordinate of these x values? If I wanted to write these as points, what would the y value be? It starts with the z. Zero. So if I wanted to write these as coordinate points, it would be 3 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. Very, very important for you guys to at least be able to like, know that and have that done. All right. Um, and then the last thing is the y-intercept which is, again, where the graph crosses at 1, 2, 3. So I'll just write that as we say y equals 3 or 0, 3. Either one is really acceptable. Is this an x-intercept, though, or a y-intercept? No, because it's a whole, right? It's undefined at that value, OK? Um, and the last thing I, f I actually forgot to mention, continuity. So continuity is basically going to be um, is the graph continuous or not? And what I mean by continuous is can you draw, the easiest way to do this is can you trace the graph without lifting up your finger or your pencil? And you can see it's pretty obvious that I cannot do that. I have to lift my pencil up, go down over here to continue drawing the graph, right? It's kind of like the continuity test. Now I did mention discontinuities because um, there actually is some definitions that we'll go through on this and they're either going to be removable or non-removable. All right, and again, you guys like this in your notes, but the basic definition, guys, if you have a jump discontinuity, like see how this, see how you have to jump from one graph to the other? That's non-removable. So this is a non-removable discontinuous graph. If you have a vertical asymptote, that is non-removable. So we'll say a jump or a vertical asymptote. So a removable is when you have a hole. Now again, this isn't technically, this is like a hole, but it's a jump discontinuity. A hole would be like, for instance, over there in this graph. Like I'll give away one answer, that's a hole. Okay, so that's a removable discontinuity. So just make sure you guys know the difference because sometimes we will talk about those. All right, but I don't, want, I don't want to talk any longer really with this. What I want to do is hopefully that gave you guys at least a starting point 